there's been a lot of, uh, of pieces over the past couple of days this week where we heard a lot about reproachment on one hand, uh, but tension on the other. Right. And so you hear stories about Bill Clinton and Bernie Sanders on the campaign trail. And I mean, Bill Clinton uh, on the campaign trail in California, both basically laying off each other in some respects. Um, Hillary Clinton was in Detroit uh, talking to the SEIU this uh, this week and had complimentary things to say about Bernie Sanders and his followers. Um, there is a decent amount of rancor still online. But, you know, Farron, most of the polling, for the most part, shows that the Democratic Party, broadly speaking, is fairly happy with the way that this primary went. I think 60 percent of them say that uh, they see the primary fight as being positive versus like 40 percent in the Republicans. Um, I think for the large to a large extent. Your average, typical, somewhat um, um, disengaged Democratic voter, fairly happy with uh, either candidate, which, you know, I think for people like ourselves who spend a lot of time digging into this stuff and are very aware of what others would perceive as nuance, I think that's sort of surprising, but that's the reality. But after all is said and done, This is a Democratic Party that has moved to the left. Now, it has a long way to go. And um, it was coming from uh, from, uh, you know, uh, to the right of where we are now, let's say. But uh, this has been a process where I think certainly the Democratic establishment, the Clinton campaign and I would say the Beltway media is is pretty shocked at how well Bernie Sanders uh, has done, continues to do, and that he's going to be able to take this to uh, the convention, I think has had very, very positive impact on the Democratic Party, at least from my perspective. I agree 100 percent. The only question that remains at this point is how much of that is going to last, uh, you know, if Bernie ends up not running for president anymore. And I, th- I think that's what a lot of people, a lot of his supporters are mainly concerned about. You know, with these people, it was never about Bernie Sanders. It was about his message, mm-hmm. you know, his ideals, what he wanted to accomplish. Those were the things that when you look at the polls, that is what the American public, you know, bipartisanly wanted. And so that's what they want to keep going. You know, it doesn't have to be through Bernie Sanders. You know, b- before it was him everybody was was hoping that Elizabeth Warren was going to jump into this race. And so is this movement that he started strong enough to continue to pull the Democratic Party to the left? And that's what has a lot of people concerned right now, because we've seen President Obama, when he ran for office, uh, hugely to the left. But then, you know, Citizens United happened, McCutcheon decision happened. And slowly, once this corporate money became just almost undefeatable, the party moves to the right. And the the Republican Party moves, you know, so far to the right that they're not recognizable. But we've seen in this election that the corporate money is not undefeatable anymore. And the people, you know, I, I feel like there is a renewed sense of we can do this in this country. And as long as the people, you know, keep this up, as long as that millennial group that has so strongly gone to Bernie Sanders, if they keep that mentality for their lives, if that is how their political views are shaped from here on out, then I think we're looking at a very strong Democratic Party moving forward that's going to work even harder for worker protections and protecting the environment and, you know, making sure that every single person has the same rights as the person next to them, regardless of, of, of gender or race or religion or what have you. And, That is the hope. The only question is, can it be sustained? And at this point, it really is up to the people, not necessarily the party. They have to hold the party accountable. Well, you know, the question is, is what's going to become of 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 Bernie Sanders um, is his email lists and the organization that was started. I mean, there you know, we've already seen some uh, former uh, Sanders campaign people um, uh, set up a. 
um, uh, an organization uh, seeking to elect uh, sort of like minded congressional uh, people. You know, we know that Bernie Sanders uh, late last week um, uh, put out an email um, uh, fundraiser uh, support for Tim Canova, who's running against uh, Debbie Wasserman Schultz in uh, Florida. We had Tim Canova on this program uh several weeks ago people can go back uh if they get the podcast to go and check out that interview with tim canova who was challenging debbie wasserman schultz but you know it'll be interesting to see what bernie sanders can leverage here because one of the things that we saw over the past couple of weeks were stories particularly coming out of uh, the whole nevada brouhaha which i think in many respects was um uh was and it's funny, it w- there was an attempt, I believe, by the Clinton campaign to make this about there was intense violence there. Of course, there was not uh, intense violence there. There was a lot of people who were unhappy with the outcome of what was going on and the lack of transparency from the chair. But the interesting thing was, in an attempt to sort of uh, marginalize Bernie Sanders and uh, his supporters, uh, we saw stories like Bernie Sanders is in control of this. Well, the interesting thing is, is if Bernie Sanders is in control of it, I mean, when I first saw those type of headlines, I was thinking this is exactly what I'd want to put out if I was Bernie Sanders, because what he wants is the Democratic Party to feel like they've got to go and give him concessions so that they get the kind of convention they want. And I think Bernie Sanders is savvy enough to know that following the convention, there's going to be a lot less attention. If he's not the nominee, he's going to get a lot less attention. So the convention is really the deadline for him to extract uh, what he wants from the Democratic Party. Now, in the past, you've seen things like uh, a nominee, like, you know, like uh, Jesse Jackson getting a um, an opportunity to sort of say, I want um, I want uh, uh, one of these three or four people to be head of the DNC. Bernie Sanders may may ask for that, you know, to get a 50 state strategy going again. We have no we don't know at this point. Uh, we know where he's gotten in terms of the platform uh, committee. Uh, that's something. But that's not um, that's not everything. And so it'll be interesting to see what Bernie Sanders uh, looks to extract from the Clinton campaign. Maybe it's I want one of these three people to be Treasury secretary. That seems unlikely that he would get something like that. But uh, this is something that we may not uh, hear about for uh, months or years. Uh, But uh, we may hear about it sooner or later. Beyond that, like you say, uh, Farron, the real question is, What are the people who supported Bernie Sanders going to do after this? Are they going to remain engaged? Are they going to try and hold the Democratic Party accountable? Are they going to support candidates uh, on down ticket races who support uh, an agenda uh, like Bernie Sanders? Or are they just going to uh, disengage and go home and uh, sleep until uh, maybe, you know, the next uh, four years? That's going to be the big question. Uh, We won't know the answer for that for a while.